Coming up, the Griner family's ready to lose the lawn. This is all going away. And dig down deep. It feels like digging the china right now. <laughs> As we summon up an English garden. Yes, how about if I drop that right there? Next on Landscape Smart. Pam and Mark love the style of their English Tudor home, but they hate the state of the back. So we're going to whack away some weeds, try to summon up some charm. Hi, my name's Anna. I'm Will. And I'm Claire. And I'm Pam. And I'm Mark. And we bought this house just about a year ago. We, we love old homes, we love this neighborhood, and we're very happy here. And we've kind of spent the last year working on the inside. We've put uh, over 100 gallons of paint on the walls and the ceilings and the floors, and now we're ready to start looking at our backyard. Uh, this is our backyard, and it's pretty shabby. I think our backyard is really bumpy. It's really dirty. I think um, it's not pretty. I think our backyard is weedy, and I can't wait to have a new backyard. So shabby, bumpy, dirty, those are pretty descriptive words. Not really positive, though, huh? Not at all. So what would be some positive words we can kind of throw back there? You're looking for? Love it to be cleaner. Cleaner. Tidier, tidier smoother. Smoother, okay. Colorful, yeah. interesting. All those, we can make it happen. I got a guy who's a great designer, too. His name's Don Felix. Good. What about it don't you like? <laughs> well, well, you start about here, <laughs> okay. and you swing around <laughs> about there, and, uh, and you've kind of got it. The house is great because we've got this nice concrete that the kids can still play on, and when it comes to playing catch and ball and things like that, they play in the front. So we can take the back, you know, the, the lawn space that we have more for um, entertaining and relaxing and, okay. and that kind of thing. Cool. There aren't um, many flowers, not much color, nothing mm -hmm. to attract butterflies and hummingbirds okay. and, and things like that. We want the rocks to stay. The rocks, uh, the rocks come from our family farms down in Iowa, from some travels, and uh, and they've come with us from two two former homes. So we we've actually moved them with us. We'd yeah. like like them to stay. We would love to integrate the style of our home. Mm -hmm. We we love the home. It's mm -hmm. a 1920s Tudor, okay. um, old, and sure. it's we, beautiful. Thank you. We we'd like a, a yard that mm -hmm. matched okay. the house. Well, I need to measure a few things out and then um, stew on some ideas, and then we can just get back to get, get together again and kind of go over the plan. Great. Thanks. Don's plan will turn this tired lawn into a charming English garden. Basically, I wanted, I wanted to create pathways that sort of take you to one main area. Two brick pathways made of red clay pavers will lead into the yard. The adjoining pathway will lead to a large patio that will house a deck and pergola and hide a shed behind it. Oh, oh okay. great idea. Yeah. Raised planter beds made of Fond du Lac stone will line the walkways and patio and will be filled with flowering plants to give the garden color all season long. The dwarf Korean lilacs are going to be kind of in and around over here. A large creek bed and waterfall will follow the entire length of the back pathway and create a cool focal point for the garden. So we'll have a waterfall coming down from the fence that faces the home. So it'll be, it'll be raised? And, yeah, it'll, it'll be elevated it'll probably about mm -hmm. this high or so. And then, it, then it'll 90 and follow the sidewalk to your patio. The side of the yard will be cleared out to make room for a play area. This is all going away. All right. Okay. Yeah, everything. everything but the rocks. Yeah, we're going to get a little hedge on the fence. And finally, the back of the house will be filled with perennials and a dry creek bed, featuring stones from the family's past. So um, that water feature, pretty cool. Yes, I'm very excited. It's like a river running through your backyard. Right, right through that little how, yard. How fun is that? That's awesome. How about for you, Mark? What's grabbing you? I think I like the pathways. The okay. way it carves up the yard a little bit into different areas for people to gather. Yeah. Nice little Sunday yep. stroll through your own backyard. Yes. Yep. Were you guys ready for the English garden to come alive? We are. All right, tally yeah. and All away right. we go. <laughs> Tear out begins and the weather goes from bad to worse. It is really starting to rain. But we press on, starting with the family stones. About half of them came from uh, from her family's farms, about half of them came from my family's farms. Yeah, let's just set them right here for now because we're going to use it for the dry creek bed. All right, perfect. The rain continues and so do we. It looks like there won't be any hoop dreams in this English garden. Okay, you ready to get around the hoop? We can. Yeah. Makes us do renovate.
and the big shed's out of here too. Well, Mark, this is going. It is. Let's clean this thing out. It, it's amazing how much, how much space that really took up. The old backyard is gone and the rain went with it. Now it's time for the big dig. We're gonna dig out the patio and then we're gonna base it. How big will this uh, patio be tucked in that corner? You said nookish. That sounds yeah. smaller to me. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's cool. It's, yeah, it's gonna approximately maybe 350 square feet with the, with the sidewalks and the patio combined around 525 square feet. The ground is good to go, so we're ready for the base gravel. Please, I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> Dude, you're killing me. I got no seatbelt here. <laughs> what did you? Oh. Thank you for not killing me, I appreciate that. So where are we going here? What's what's the deal? Yeah, we're gonna get some three-quarter minus just to base our pavers. Throw the base rock down? Yeah. We're all about the pavers right now. This is where I exit. What are you looking forward to the most? I think just having a nice organized space. An organized space. An organized space. space. That you got is... three kids, you like you appreciate organization. I, I can get that. Yeah. Now that the base is tamped, it's time to set the deck. Carpenter Clark Alslaben is up front building the deck frame. So Clark, why do you like to do it this way? Sort of uh, build the, the frame and then put the posts in? Well, I can take this back and I can square it off on the ground where, we, where it's gonna sit. Set my posts so everything's nice and perpendicular, straight, square. We'll tag team this, you hammer. I'll drill. We're just using this as a temporary to hold okay. everything straight. I think we're in the carry mode? Yes, we are. All right. Once the frame is all squared up, we carry it to the back and place it. Does it feel like the right size to you? It does. Now that it's yeah, in the it yard looks, with all right. the does stuff look, around it? Seems a little bit bigger, a little bit nicer than I thought it would be. The deck is set. Time now to dig the post holes. How far down, Clark? Oh, we're going to go about 48 inches. 48 yeah. inches. The tax law doesn't sound so bad right now, huh? No, it feels like digging the China right now. <laughs> All right, boys, right here, but don't put it in yet. All right. Take this bag of concrete, put it at the bottom, stamp it in place, set the posts on top of it, backfill it. Talk about digging down deep. All right, let's do it. All right. So, so let's just put the posts in. All right. With the posts set, we focus on the pergola. Just sizing up our little pergola here, and then we're going to start building. Coming up, we use a diplomatic method to decide our paver design. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe, catch Absolutely. a pattern by the toe. And when the boulders arrive, Mark has his doubts. So I'm looking at this kind of going, what have we just gotten ourselves into? <laughs> Straight ahead on Landscape Smart. We torn out the old lawn, placed our deck, and prepared the base for our patio. All that's missing are the pavers. This is the uh, red rumbled paver. I mean, it, it just, it looks like when you walk around, if you if you walk around gardens, if you walk around yeah. on pathways, it, it, it reminds you of what you see, something that's been there for 80 years. People yeah, walking yeah, on these it. pavers are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, that's a lot of bricks. Yeah. With over 500 square feet of pavers delay, we need to figure out a pattern. Moment of truth, we got to decide on basket weave, herringbone, running bond, right? Mm-hmm. What are you guys liking? Uh, I kind of like the herringbone. Herringbone? Oh, that's what I was heading toward. Mm-hmm. All three are traditional. In the, you know, in the sense of kind of what we were going for. For the garden, the English yeah. garden thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe, catch Absolutely. a pattern by the toe. Yeah. The if thing it to you, <laughs> then it's a go. Is one more sturdy than the other? Or well, herringbone is, is structurally the strongest pattern, but okay. it's a foot traffic sidewalk and patio, which, you know, really any one of the patterns are all going to hold up fine. Okay, herringbone it is then. Yeah, and then they all fit within, you know, our, our, our design theme. style. Yep. I love the I love the way it's going to go from a running bond to a running bond on the path, going into the herringbone into the uh, into the deck. Into yeah, the board. I think yeah, I, I like that idea too. Just it's sort of like transitioning from one spot to another. You know, one one from where you're walking on the pathways to one where where you're just congregating. Yeah, it's absolutely. Very, it's an interesting pattern. I like the herringbone pattern. Cool. Why the clay papers? They're old world. They're English. Um, they kind of really have that just that nice feel up against the Tudor house. The patio comes together in no time. It goes in a lot faster than I thought it would. But it's hard on the knees. 
the patio pavers make way for our stone wall edging. Uh, these walls are going to completely encompass all the pavers. So the sidewalks will have walls next to them, pa the patio will have walls next to it. Make sure they're tight up against the pavers. And I love the contrast of the white against the red. Yeah, isn't it awesome? It's very pretty. So we're doing those elevated walls. Mm -hmm. What do you think that's going to bring to the yard? Oh, it will really define the space give us some nice separation between the different areas that Don has made for us. Mark and Pam are excited to see their new yard come together, but their excitement turns to apprehension when the boulders for the water feature arrive. What have we just gotten ourselves into? <laughs> so, so Mark, don't, you, don't, wanted, don't a, you <laughs> wanted a tall waterfall, right? Yeah, I wanted a waterfall. <laughs> you you seriously got me Sweet. nervous on this. And I, 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 I have faith, but I, <laughs> this is the first point of questioning. Before we get to move the heavy stones, we get to move the heavy dirt. It's the only way to build a pond and waterfall. That is a really huge hole. It is, isn't it? It's <laughs> a huge hole in my backyard. <laughs> is it's, it too is, big for you? Is the pond going to be that big? The pond list? It's, it's something pond? you're not even going to see. Okay, so I hard Basically what it amounts to is the larger the hole, the less maintenance you have to deal with. Keep digging. Why are we doing this by hand? <laughs> How big is that pump? What are we talking here? Uh, the pump's 45, it's a 4,500 pump. Oh my goodness. So basically it's pumping about 4,500 gallons yeah, an hour. Yeah, that will crank. It's nice to be able to work with some volume of water. Yeah. You know, you're able to, you're able to turn it, you're able to pool it, you're able to, you know, get nice sound. Be a little more creative with it. Yeah. Coming up, with our hole dug, we'll figure out where to stick all those boulders. We put our new waterfall to the test, our patio grows by leaps and bounds, and our pergola is just about ready to provide some shade. It's all coming up next on Landscape Smart. Hey, it's the beginning of day two in Pam and Mark's backyard. We're transforming it into an English country garden. Big projects today, we're gonna do the water fountain, pergola, finish off the patio, and put in all the plants. With the pump and miner in place, we can get busy with the boulders. You wanna hand me one of those big rocks? Whoa. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Basically, what we're gonna do is position some of these larger stones around the snorkel, because we wanna kinda of start out larger and work our way into smaller stones so we have lots of pockets for the, the water to travel. Somewhere there's a back surgeon clapping right now. With the pondless part of the water feature complete, we place the biofall. So what we need to do is level this and get it in position. And then we're gonna want it to tip forward. Well, it's and leaning back this way, but we want it to lean forward okay. just to encourage the water to fall out of this opening quicker. With the biofall in, we bring on even more boulders. There aren't as many rocks as I thought there'd be. You know, <laughs> when I first saw that pile, I didn't see how I'd use them all. But it disappears quickly. Well. The big boulders have all found a home, and the family's rock collection will add a personal touch to the waterfall. Okay, Don, we found some rocks. Uh-oh. We each got them. <laughs> the petrified piece, oh, I was hoping someone yep. grabbed that. I had to pick that. Very cool. We'll pick the petrified. I tried to lift it, but I couldn't. Oh, well, that's right. okay. Well, it looks like you have cords. Sure, just Anna. drop it. Okay. Cool. Wow, look at that. Cool. She likes the diamonds. A heart. A heart. A heart, that's there right. We go. Like a heart. That one's heart. just not going to work. You've got to put it in there again. to see the heart, though. All right, oh. it's got to be positioned for the heart. Now that the work is complete, it's time for a test run. Okay, well, we're going to turn on our water feature. It's not complete. We still have rocks to place. We still have exposed plastic, as you can see here. We're going to hide all that stuff. But let's just give it a shot and see what happens. Oh, very cool. Yay. Yeah, yeah, I, it pumps a lot of water. It's a, yeah. lot, a lot of flow. Yeah. Look at that. I had no oh, question spent to get Mission accomplished. Now, back to our pathways and garden beds. Mark, basically what I'm doing is using this string line to line up the door with the sidewalk. All right. So we basic, basically this string line will act as a guide when we're laying our pavers so we can have the, the sidewalk perfectly in line with the door. So perpendicular to the, uh, to the driveway in line with this sidewalk. It takes us right to the water feature, right? Absolutely. Yep. All right? Yeah. More digging. <laughs> this is the dig it show. Yes, how about if I drop that right there? With all hands on deck, we finish the remaining pathways, stone walls, and dry creek bed in no time at all. The yard is looking more British at every turn, but we still need to finish the deck and pergola. That looks kind of great, isn't it? 
It'll be nice to sit down on a sunny day and get some uh, relief from the sun. With the deck and pergola well on its way, Clark starts on the new storage shed. All right, Mike, let's stand this up, see if we get her in there. Perfect. All right, so what we're going to do then is put the hardy board on the back that's going to match your shed, and then we're going to add some nice cedar on a vertical design. Okay. So it'll be a nice cedar enclosure, nice privacy for, uh, for us, and it'll be great. Yeah, should look sharp. We're in the home stretch, and that means the plants are here. There you go, Pam. Cool. Oh, look at that. This is not your grandpa's farm, <laughs> is Thank it? Thank you, huh? no. <laughs> this is very fancy. Holy cow. Nice. Isn't that pretty? They go along the garage. Constantly blooming. Um, they were going to go along the garage, and I'm thinking of relocating them. Well, we, we're, yeah, well, they're beautiful anyway. Is that a climbing rose? Uh, no, no, this is a shrub rose. Shrub, shrub, shrub rose. So more bush like? <laughs> uh, yeah, yep, okay. yep. Um, and we are going to be working with some climbing roses too, though. Cool. So now, Pam, you wanted to have color all season long, right? That is correct. And so for her to get that, you had to do what? Well, well working know. with the shrub roses and working with perennial gardens, mm -hmm. we were able to get that color cool. all season. Yeah. To have, you know, blooms, colors all season long, especially mm -hmm. here in the Midwest, is there mm -hmm. any, like, secret? Is there tips? Well, it's working with the appropriate variety of plantings. I mean, you, you have plants that are going to bloom in the spring, you're going to have plants that are going to bloom you know, in the in the late spring and in the summer months, and you're gonna have plants that'll bloom late summer, and then, you know, fall color. So it's kind of working with all of those and trying to coordinate balance. What do you think of the hall? Oh, I'm already loving it. It's quite the catch, huh? It is beautiful. Already the variety and color and texture. Oh uh, yeah, let's get two over here. Then we'll get a shrub rose here. I yeah. love being able to pick the flowers and bring them inside, and I'm really going to be able to do that with those. It's got a total English feel to it. It does. Don't you think? It does, yet it's, it's relaxed and casual, yeah. which is what we are. I keep thinking tea and roses. I don't know why. That's yeah. so weird. Okay, guys, we got another elevated bed that's in the center of our garden, and we're going to use wintergreen boxwood for that. Well, we're planting the dwarf Korean lilac in this bed to essentially create a division, or like a divide, if you will, between what yard space we'll have over here and the rest of our garden. So these are gonna globe and fill out nicely and uh, literally just separate the two. Green on the outside, brown on the inside. That's our mulch coming in. All this beautiful mulch is going in your right. yard. So what do you guys think of the, you know, now that we're almost done, how's the yard looking to you? Oh, it's beautiful. I love the color. Love, love the way the, the clay bricks and the white stone uh -huh. and the plants all work work off of each other. I mean, there's a lot of lot of activity back there, you know, <laughs> from a landscape perspective. Oh, and in a small space. Yeah. So I can't believe everything that Don could work into our plan, into our yard. Oh. We shovel, you will. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. the Get deal. The curb. <laughs> yeah. And of course, behind any load of mulch comes sod. With the new sod in place, we decide to test it. Excellent. Now you have to. No, I have to. <laughs> Yay! That's springy sod. It's <laughs> Coming up, will the grinders have good things to say about their new English garden? We'll find out next on Landscape Smart. When we started, the grinders' old backyard was descriptively bad. Now it's been transformed into a stately English garden. Pam, for you, the biggest drawback to the old yard was what? It was an eyesore. Mm -hmm. Giant shed taking up half the yard. Yeah. And now, Mark, do you feel like uh, Don's design kind of delivered on the goods for the uh, yard? I think you got everything on our wish list. It's, it's more than we could hope for. The clay paper pathways lead you through to a welcoming destination. A pergola, deck, and large adjoining patio. Mark, what does a path bring to the yard for you and Pam? You know, what, I, what I think it is, is you come out of our house and the pathway draws you into the yard mm -hmm. and makes you want to come in and see the plants and the water feature. I love the red brick that matches our home. Uh, I mean, do you ever like get up in the morning, look out your window and go, I'm going to go for a walk today in my yard? Well, a little bit. <laughs> you know what? You look outside and, you, and yeah. you do. You want to come out and you just want to spend five minutes walking around. Nice. And then give, go off to work. But it, it's just tremendous. It's just wonderful. The raised garden beds provide colorful blooms throughout the growing season and the water feature adds a majestic element. Pam, are you kind of blown away by the fact that you have a river running, you know, through the yard? Right through it. That's I amazing. love it. Yeah. Love it. What else works about this 
You know, I love it. It's very calm and serene. It sounds good. It looks good. We can enjoy it from inside the house mm -hmm. as well as, as out here. And it's nice that you kind of were able to customize it even further with those rocks that are part of your family and your history. Makes it really unique and really special. From the dry creek bed and complementary pathway at the back of the house to the plant-filled garden boxes that surround the pathways, this yard feels like a slice of merry old England. So design-wise, Don, the key elements in this yard that, that create that English charm? The pathways, the beautiful funnel like stone, the I red love clay all the brick. I love the way the brick and the white kind of go together. Yeah, play yeah. Off each other. And the pathways obviously you have to have a destination. So. And to this pergola. Beautiful. To the pergola. Best thing about this pergola for you guys? What would you say? Uh, it's, yeah, it's just gorgeous. Turned out better than we thought. Hides the little shed that's I love the uh, idea for the know. back here to hide the shed. It smells it's, good. Yeah. The cedar, it, it smells, looks good. We have yeah. a great view of the finished yard. Yeah, you're kind of perched up here on the pergola, you looking out over the yard. Looking out the over the kids. Feature. So you guys, we started with, what was it? It was weedy, shabby, shabby and dirty. Bumpy. The old yard. Mm -hmm. So now how would you describe, what would you say for the new? Uh, we have better space to play. Better? It's cleaner. Cleaner? Claire? And prettier. And yeah. prettier. <laughs> They're adorable. I mean, even your kids' names, Will, Anna, and Claire, right? <laughs> yes. Sound English. Yeah, very English. <laughs> and you're playing soccer in English game. Well, I got an another couple of words. Done. Finished. Complete with that. Out of here. I'm Paul Garangelli. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Landscape Smart.